Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to be talking about CO2 jets and alternatives and lasers. So what I'd like to do is build a sci-fi blaster prop um, with a visible laser beam that shoots out of the front. Um, so uh, what I've got here is a laser pointer. It's a normal uh, less than one milliwatt um, sort of cheap laser pen that you can buy on eBay for about two to five British pounds in money. Um, so it's one of the very low power ones. This one happens to be a green one. You can get them in red and blue as well. Um, obviously it's quite low power. Um, you can see the dot there, but you can't see the beam because it's not high power enough. So even a laser of this, this uh, power can be dangerous. If you shine this straight into your eye, um, you can actually damage your vision. So you should still be quite careful with these lasers. The ones where you can see the, the beam are generally... Um, you know, a few milliwatts more powerful, but um, you don't need much in terms of laser because the light is polarized and all goes in one direction. So the ones where you can see the beam um, basically are capable of burning things and setting fire to things. So that's really dangerous. So basically this is as high power as I'm going to go. But how am I gonna make the beam visible? So uh, generally if you go and you see a laser show in a nightclub or um, something like that, um, the lasers are a bit more powerful, but generally nightclubs are pretty smoky places. They generally have smoke machines or some other means of generating some mist in the air. So the laser's got something to shine through and therefore you can see sort of a solid beam shooting across the room. So there's several ways we can do that. Um, if we're going to put something in a costume or a prop, what we really want is something quite small. So we don't really want one of the big fog machines that you have to carry along that's powered from outlet power. Um, not to mention the power requirements and the heating up time. So we want something quite small where we can just generate vapour at will quite quickly. So one of the ways we can do that is with CO2. So um, I've got a couple of these CO2 canisters, which are the sort of things you'd use for home brewing um, or soda siphon. Um, they're one use ones. They've got a, a thread on them. One is used. You can see the hole in the top where it's been pierced. This one is not used. Um, I've got um, a CO2 bike tyre inflator here, which you screw the canister into, um, and that's got a valve that you press, and you get a bit of a, a squirt of vapour. So um, basically these um, tanks have CO2 liquid in, which is what happens to CO2 gas when you compress it a lot. Um, so to get a nice white cloud, what we really need to do is squirt the liquid out so it immediately turns to gas in the air. So we need to turn it this way up, and give it a good squirt and then we'll get lots of vapor so let's give that a go all right here we go so this can be quite dangerous so what you'll notice is immediately this whole thing is completely frozen so that's actually ice on there um, and not to mention the high pressures that are involved as well so um, Probably should have worn gloves to do that because that's actually uh, frozen my hand slightly. Obviously frostbite is dangerous where your blood freezes and then a piece of you dies. Um, and also, uh, if we're not careful with the hoses and things we use on here, if they can't withstand the low temperatures, then they could um, crack. And also if we got ice in the tube, the hose could then burst and we'll end up with lumps of ice being shot at people or we'll end up with a, a pipe blowing or something like that so you've got to be incredibly pressure uh, careful with the high pressure that's that's in these canisters and also that's empty now so um, we'd have to go and refill that with another canister you obviously can get bigger co2 canisters like the one ones for soda siphons but then you've got to carry those around and you've got to keep refilling them so what we really need is a way that we can generate vapour when we want to, perhaps turning it on and off um, electronically. We want something that doesn't need any specialist fuel, anything that doesn't use high or low temperatures. Pyrotechnics is an option, but obviously that's quite dangerous as well. Um, and, then, and something perhaps without um, any low pressures involved. But what's the alternative? So, uh, what have I got here? Well, I've got a bowl of vapour. Um, I've got my laser pointer, so let's just shine that in. You can just about see the uh, visible beam. So let's just, there we go. So um, what I've got here in fact is one of these ultrasonic misters, which um, is electronic. Um, basically you drop it into water. So this is just normal tap water in a bowl. And as soon as you do so, it immediately generates a load of mist. 
So this is uh, powered from currently this cable here, which has got a DC jack plug on the end. It's actually 24 volts and it draws about an amp, but um, I've got a thing on the way which is a 12 to 24 volt DC step up converter, so I can power that from a 20, uh, 12 volt battery and it'll draw about two amps. Um, but basically it generates mist fairly immediately, so, and if, I, and if I switch it off, the mist hangs around for quite some time. So um, let's just blow all that away, and then if we turn it back on, within a few seconds we've got um, quite a nice dense mist again. So um, obviously the fuel is water, this is just using ultrasonic, it isn't getting hot, um, it's not getting cold. It's just using an ultrasonic transducer to break up the surface of the water and turn it into water vapour. And water's fairly safe. Okay, so it's not that safe. Generally water's non-toxic, you can drink tap water, it doesn't do anything bad to you. However, bacteria can breed in water, and if you turn the water into vapour and um, shoot it into the air, then basically you can actually um, spread a lot of nasty respiratory diseases like Legionnaire's disease, which can be fatal. So you should always be careful that the water's clean, um, and if you really want to go the extra mile, then you should go to a uh, pool or spa shop and get some chlorine granules and some dipstick measurers, and make sure that you've um, you know, chlorinated your water to the same level as perhaps a swimming pool. So you don't want to overdo it as well, because also, uh, spraying chlorine around in the air can be quite bad if you um, if you overdo it. So um, this is pretty hit and miss to get a vapour that we can shine a laser through. I'll just give it a blow. Um, obviously that's gone everywhere. So let's try a different shaped container. So um, I've now got, um, obviously as you can see, a much longer container which holds the vapour a bit better. It doesn't just all blow away. So um, my laser, we need to just go and give that a little blow, get some vapour out and then we can see we can see um, almost a solid laser beam. So what we really need to do is um, sort out the plumbing really, so we probably need to optimise this trough shape to hold loads of the vapour and then we need to very slowly um, shift the vapour towards the front of the prop, so maybe using a very low speed fan or something like a mechanical plunger to just waft a bit out and at the same time activate our light show so that we can see a visible beam. Um, I'd also like to use some other high power LEDs focused through lenses to make um, a sort of cone shape of white light and perhaps some lasers shooting around the outside. So. I'll be doing a part two on this where I'll actually be doing some plumbing, getting some pipes, sorting out what's going on with this and sorting out the power. So come back for part two to check out the progression of my blaster prop with a visible beam. <laughs>